Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Before we launch into this episode, got a couple of messages to run by you. Number one is patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. Are you on it? You should be. If you enjoy this podcast, Patreon's where you go. It's like the velvet rope into the members area. And what's going on in there? Bonus podcasts, live streams, early release of tickets, vlogs. I, saw, I nearly said vlogs, but there's there's vloggings. You want to see Kieran Bartlett get flogged at the top of Cave Hill? Patreon.com slash TV Podcast. If we had 2,000, we're doing that. We're on the way to 2,000. This podcast is an express train. We're headed to 2,000 patrons. We can't be stopped. Come and join us. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me Podcast. We're also sponsored by Thompson's Tea. What is the number one question? What is the number one selling tea in Northern Ireland? Answer, Thompson's. Punjana. Yeah? These guys are like the, um, who's a really famous family? <laughs> Pardon? They're not like the Waltons. <laughs> no, it's the worst suggestion of all time. I mean, like, um, who's a family everybody, like, uh, like, uh, like the, 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 the Kardashians? No, they're not like the Kardashians either. Tony? The Jacksons? They're not like the Jacksons. They're... These, they're, these guys are making unbelievable tea. Don't worry about who they're like. They're knocking it out of the park. They've got the Irish breakfast. They've got Punjana. They've got decaf, which we have no respect for. Just don't have tea if you're... If you're going to have decaf, just don't have tea. It's stupid, right? But these guys are the best. You know you've tasted the PG... I have only PG tips. Fucking smash that mug. Oh, we only have Tetley in here. Evicted. Someone you know, someone else tetley phone the phone the housing executive, get them out, saying they're say they're doing gear. Thompson's is Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. Keep drinking it. They've been making tea right here in Belfast since the eighteen hundreds, and they're they're going to continue to do so whether you like it or not. We are also sponsored by Manscaped. We need to talk about it. Hmm. You're downstairs. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. It's coming into the su- It's not coming into the summer. It is the absolute summer. And you need to get out there and you need to be free. And I know what you're doing. You're out there. No top on. No shoes. No socks. But you're wearing three pairs of trousers. I know why. You're embarrassed. Get yourself to manscaped.com. Use a code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Shane, what, what, what's, what's over there? Why do you need to go to Manscaped? Men's below the belt grooming products. I've never done that before. You should. They've got the lawnmower 4.0. They've got ball deodorant, ball wipes, ball toner. And you didn't even think that was possible. Manscaped have made it so. Anti snag technology. Yeah. So, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be looking like a a, a pizza down there. <laughs> it's not gonna be looking like a, it's not gonna be looking like a pepperoni passion from a height, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, all cut up. It's gonna look. I was gonna say something so dark there involving seals, but I won't. <laughs> Manscaped.com. They need to stop doing that, by the way. Manscaped.com um, I'm talking about the singer um, Baby You could tell me for 20% off And free shipping I like the perfect performance package I like it when I travel You know I've been, I've been in so many airports Using Manscaped products At customs I've been asked a lot of questions And the number one question is How do I get money off that tea with me 20% off and free shipping Link is in the description this episode, whoa, I'm hyped for this. Two big hitters on with me. Two of the most respected guys in local boxing. He's good looking. He can talk. He can hit. He's got the record. And Tommy McCarthy's on too. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Butler, 
and Tommy McCarthy. I've been wanting that Tommy on for a long time. Sometimes when do you get a box wrong? Because sometimes you're like made them in camp, and then when they're in camp, you don't want to get them on because they're doing boxing all. And then when they're not in camp, then you're like, oh, you probably don't want to come on a podcast. Then you probably want to chill out because you've been eating chicken broccoli for three months. But we've made it happen. Tommy is uh, is a very interesting guy. Always seems like a fun character. So buzzing to have him on. Aaron, as we all know, local boxing expert. They know each other. They're, I think they're both from the West. Of course, they know each other. Let's find out how. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Tea With Me podcast with Tommy McCarthy and Aaron Butler. Tommy, do you drink tea? Are you a tea drinker? You fine? Drink tea. A lot of tea? Lots and lots. In it, most in a day? I couldn't tell you, but... Out of shame, or you just no, don't know? No, no, I just, I just lose count. Yeah. But about two years ago, I two years ago, I went from a medical, no, my yearly medical for boxing. Right. And everything was just going normal, and then he, he was taking my heart, and he went... And I started panicking, I was like, what the fuck? And he went, right, we'll come back to that, and then done the rest <laughs> of it. That's not what you want to hear and when he's doing your going, heart. Fuck's sake. And then at the end, he'd done the whole thing. He came back. He was listening. He's like, Did you drink lots of coffee? And I went, No. Tea? I said, oh, Tea flat out. Yeah, you need to cut back in the tea. It's giving you an extra heartbeat. And I went, Extra heartbeat? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that happens when you're getting too much caffeine. So right. I panicked. I, I cut back for a while. I, I tried to go down to three a day. But right. Then I got my next medical. And so there's your tea now. Oh. There's your tea now, and we've got our second Once, guest. Uh, Good to see you, big and son. You, oh, you got the belt? I should have yeah. brought my hands. <laughs> no, you don't need to. I've got mine oh, here. Now, so, yeah. We've got two. Why are, you dre- why are you dressed like that? I just came from train. Just came from train. I was doing, I had, uh, we've got these on because I was doing road work a day. Yeah. You, have you do the road work comic? Same. Yeah. It's fate's and have you trained, to get, you should train together? Have we trained together? What? In spirit? Yeah. In spirit, in spirit we have, but we're from different camps. Yeah. Right. Different camps, so he, he wouldn't really train no. with me. But it's good to be in the presence of another boxer turned comedian. Yeah. You know, from West Belfast. Yeah. I, I laid out the foundation. Yeah. Right. We Tommy ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. We Tommy ran with it. He's flying with it now. I love to see it. <laughs> You're an inspiration. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but it's just great to be here today. So it is. Good, so good. Well, look, you I know you're a big boxer. Do you want to hold the belt? No, it's. A, what's Do you remember you held Reese's belt? Yeah, but that's. But that's you want to hold the belt? belt? That's a big. Put the belt away. Put the I'll belt put the belt away out of respect. <laughs> for. And what is the belt? What is? What did you win that? That for? is the the WBE championship. What it stands for? That's the World Boxing Association. <laughs> Belt, so it is. Nice. So yeah, that's a WBE one. You don't see those too often. They're mostly in the amateurs when yeah. I had it. Now, you two know each other. We'll get on to that in a second. But this guy's telling me you went for a medical. And the doc- oh, yeah. The doctor, the, the <laughs> the doctor said heartbeat. I was drinking too much tea. So I cut back. And then when I went back the next year, and um, I got the all clear. So we read. That's up with those seats again. So I'm back. I'm back up. The all clear to drink tea. Love it. Okay, gonna, gonna die by a tea. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. But now I'm, I'm back up. I love that we have uh, we have someone on the podcast that likes tea as much as I do because you're willing to risk your life for it. Yeah. A doctor's literally like, you've too many heartbeats. You're drinking tea. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I did come back for a while, and right. then once my heartbeat went back to regular. Yeah. I went back up to my regular team. Self-diagnosed. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to say this as well. Now, some people listening on audio podcast, you won't see this, but the video people will. You were getting a haircut before this. Yeah. That's a great cut. Oh, thank you. Now, I hope you don't mind me saying this. You told me that your haircut was going to roughly take an hour. How come? Um... Because I, I like I, to be yeah, in and out in 20 minutes. Yeah. I go see Coco 20 minutes. Nah, well, see, like... There's a difference. I hate to, I hate to bring racing things, but I have to. Excuse me. So don't trigger <laughs> me right now. <laughs> you watch yourself, all right? You behave. Man, uh, black barbers is just different. So that uh, obviously the hair, ta- Afro hair, is different. So he has to cut it, and he can't just come in with scissors and go right. There you go. You got what people do to me. I've seen it. Just I've in. seen. I've been a lie witness. <laughs> but, but, barbers, but and I, then. Uh, there's loads of like, there's a lot of fucking about, 
in Black Barbers too. Like they're just talking to people. And Where is this in Belfast? I Sandy Row. So I'm doing cross community. That's where I got my orange tap on. Love it. Love <laughs> Trying it. to stay on the cover. Represent. Yes. Black Barbers on the Sandy Row. No. I, no. Can I ask you this? It, is the barber black? Yeah, he's from Nigeria. So this is his barber shop is like the hub for black Belfast community. Like people come from everywhere. From Obviously, I'm from Lanadoon, so I travel over. There's people from Springfield, they're coming from Lisburn, or just because it's it's hard to find a black barber. And what would happen if me and him walked in? He cuts white guys hard as well. That's right. So um, <laughs> it's, it's it's cross, <laughs> but like, I was but like say cross community, but it's cross community and cross. Uh, <laughs> Transracial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the right fellas for that. Let me tell you. <laughs> Transracial. So he's got black guys in there, and he's he's and he's good. Women. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, as well, cause it's like it's red in the middle of the Sandy Row, so right. the young kids are coming in, and yes, it cuts everyone's hair. But because I would have thought you're saying black hair takes longer to cut, yeah. but I would have thought because my hair's finer. You know, a little bit like, um, so say, say my head was like a lawn, right? right. Mm. I have like thinner grass, mm, so, so surely a lawn more be quicker going over that. Do you know what I mean? So you're saying, your argument so is... your argument is that yours will be quicker, which yes. proves the point. Yes. You're oh, just, that's yeah, what we've said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's what we were trying to say right there. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Tommy tells us you were in uh, you you were fighting in the Eddie Hearn back garden fights. Yeah. What was the scratch? Because that was over COVID. Whenever you couldn't have arenas, you couldn't yeah. have like audiences and stuff. Well, I thought in his garden was the first like Event? they had people in, so they were allowed. I think it was three hundred. Oh, so there was like yeah. a good few. What, what, but what, uh, how different was that compared to having like the big arena full? Did you get to go in this house? Yeah. So I went to Etsy for a press conference a few weeks before. It was fucking boiling. It must have been about fucking 30 degrees. Right. And my manager was like, stick a suit on, make sure you look a sp-. Stop I drinking went, tea, Tommy. I like was I can't. sweltering. Yeah. Like, I had a full suit on. Everybody else had their shorts and t-shirts on. But you know what I mean? Pain is beauty and yeah. that to say. So <laughs> I had to stick Man's on a three-piece. And um, but it was frigging boiling. And then that day, you got to you know, go around and see all the ground. Like, it's it's not where he lives now. It's a family home where he grew up. Right. And it's, it's like, so indescribable. They're, they have, like, a zoo, more or less. Like, the back was like, alpacas and all running about. And it looks huge. It's just, it's just, I can't imagine. did we not imagine. have it? <laughs> Do you not have alpacas? Oh, this is Hollywood. <laughs> I um, only had one. <laughs> but I, I just the couldn't imagine growing up in a house again. That's really my new box name. The land between alpacas. <laughs> I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it, yeah. What, what's your current one? Mag Attack. Mag Attack. Mag Attack's good. It's all using talking about how you get the nicknames. Yeah. yeah. And you what did you say? Did you say they give you it in the gym? They he gave me mine. Aaron was uh, saying when he went to the gym, they gave me mine. They, they gave just you gave you yours. Mine was uh, white lightning. Yeah. And that was because, you know the cider? Yeah. Oh, my sparring had partners. A of my sparring partners. Of water bottles. <laughs> <laughs> my sparring partners were waking up going, fuck, I have a sore head. And the trainers were going, that's white lightning. That's white lightning. And they were going, but I wasn't drinking. And then they would just produce, because you didn't have mobile phones back then. Yeah. They produced a wee Polaroid of me. Stand with a bottle. Like <laughs> and they stand with a bottle of white lightning. And they went, that's what got you, sparring me. Uh, but yeah. see, to be honest, like, they actually do you give you your nickname. It's not like, like, you can't just walk in and say, this is my you nickname. Could, obviously, you know, because you were in it to me, then walk in and say, I'm White Lightning. They would have laughed you out of place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to be blessed with So, it. like, my, when I turned pro, obviously, amateurs don't really have nicknames, but when right. I turned pro, this guy was training me, um, Banny Chaga. He's from Panama. I don't know if he's ever... He used to actually train Brian McGee. Right. Oh, Brian, and, yes. He, um, <laughs> yeah, Brian. Who doesn't know Brian? Anyone yeah. you mention in boxing... <laughs> Your oh, full name? Go way back. He'll just it. reply with their first name and say yes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll start name dropping. <laughs> yeah. Me too. But um, I Benny used to used to train Eamon O'Kane as well. And Eamon. Paul McCluskey. <laughs> Paul, Paul McCluskey. Um, 
a few. He's trained all like a, a lot of people he's been involved with. But uh, he says, so so Tommy, what is your nickname? And uh, T Mac. Just oh no, you can't have that. It has to be vicious. It has to be something. And I said, fuck, like T Mac. People's always T Mac's good. Yeah, I know that. And it's just simple. And he was like, no, you have to be the destroyer or something. I was going. I'm just fuck off. Just <laughs> comes all the way from Panama. Uh, so <laughs> and then uh, a fella who I was training with doing strength conditioning, he actually says to me like, "You are the mag attack. That's who you are." And I was like, "Fuck, that sounds that good." Works. So yeah, there is some truth to what he's saying. That That's good. Tim gives it. Now the, back to the black barber. <laughs> <laughs> he's really focused. I. <laughs> But I think for a bit of Patreon content, at some point we, me and you go. Yeah, I, 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 I no bother. Like, but, but I, and it, what way would they? What, well, how you just would we just go in and ask for what you want? Like, yeah. If you, What's his name? Hope. Hope. No, he's no hope of us too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's like. But that looks, see, that looks sharp. There's, that looks really good. That does way. It does take someone because like if they get lined the line? up, no. No, can no, I get no, lined up? Yeah. Well, you get whatever you want. He'll but I want lined up. And there's, there's I want guy, hope to line me up. That's a guy, or you may know him because um, who did he play for? He played in the Irish League. Um, Kiki. Oh, why? You know him? Yeah, he works her. Does he? Aye. Cutting her. Cutting her. Kiki. I can't now. My barber's cool. Co- I go to Coco. <laughs> what is so I'm, I be going names? Coco to Kiki. <laughs> well, Coco to Kiki. The hope. You may as well. Sure. Do you actually know him? 100%. He's he used football, to play for... From France? Played for Dundella. Played for Bally McCash now. Yeah. Played for Arts. Yep. Oh, why? And he can play for Cliftonville too. This is class. So, he's... My barber, who owns it, Hope, he trained Kiki up. Now, Kiki's on his, out on his own there. Now, have you got your hair cut by white guys before? Yeah. Um, and did you notice a big difference? Will some of them be like, mate, I can do only, it? Or would they say you know beforehand, what? mate, I'll do it my best? I've got my hair cut... I've always had long hair my whole life. And then I cut my hair for the first time in third year. Right. Cut all the braids off. and But I was in London. I used to go to, I still do, like, but I used to go for the summer to London. So I'm with the family and all over. So I got my hair cut over there and it was fucking brilliant. And then I came home and we went back to school. All my mates I used to go to this barber in the Falls Road. Pat the barber. <laughs> no, down the pats. We'll go down the pats. I mean, it does exactly what it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, right, I'll try it. So this is my first and last time going to a white guy to cut my hair. <laughs> so he started, he started cutting it. He says, what do you want? It's me. Uh, one of the sides, just trim the top. And it, like you say, he done exactly what he done on the tim. Just one of the sides and trim the top. But he started getting the scissors out and getting a comb and all doing right. uh, that yeah. all uh, oh, crack. Yeah. And I was going... <laughs> and then because he he didn't do much he didn't shape me up or anything and when he was done he was like right that's you kid like, that's me fuck's sake just, you haven't even done one eighth of a job right. but obviously my experience in a barbers had only been black barbers right and I think I would go as far as to say and first and last afro hair he'd ever cut <laughs> I said, you know what, I'm, n- I'm never gone again. Imagine so if I he just, just started specialising. Can't imagine. <laughs> Don't make my car out here. Fuck's sake, he was, there. He was loving it. Because <laughs> you can get lined up in the West. Actually, oh, but yeah. it's not yeah. bad. But you that's know what? I'm land. I'm not land, but I'm just... <laughs> what are you doing? Here, you're not so, being questioned. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. How quickly would you so, fall apart? <laughs> Pardon, um, fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, so I went there, and then for years, I just cut my own hair. I learned how to cut my own hair. And it's fucking, it was hard, but I was always happy with holding the mirror up with one hand. No, it's a, but that's a whole different thing. But then, Podrick, who um, owns Cutting Edge Barbers up in West Belfast, then I went to him. I saw a couple of guys, actually, Kevin Ajago. Yeah. Saw a picture of him and um, on this Cutting Edge his Instagram. I was like, fuck. Podrick looks like he knows what he's at, so I went up and Podrick says he 
he actually was specializing. He is the white guy who specializes in Alpha Herbs. And I was going to Podrick. Like, no, Podrick is the, the best barber in the West. And, um... It's a new reality TV series. I know. Yes, I know. You should, see the, yeah, you should just go around them apart. So it's going to Podrick Flat West, West Belfast next up, Afro, <laughs> Afro Caribbean Barber. And Podrick, see the, like the mixed jazz guys in, in West Belfast. All three of us, we're all going to fucking Podrick. Yeah, even an iron hip. So I was going to Podrick for years. And I like Podrick's been made as well. And fucking, as I say, he was brilliant. And um, done a stellar job, but then his stock was reading, so you have to book to get in. And one day, I couldn't get in. He was fully booked, and I had a, I think it was going to something, something special. I think it was birthday party or something. <laughs> oh yeah, real special. <laughs> yeah, I was going somewhere, and I needed to get my hair cut, and he couldn't okay. get me in. Eighth birthday in the uh, fall. Bring my wee girl to her mate's birthday party. <laughs> I had to get lined up. <laughs> and um, I seen Hope on Instagram and uh, I went to him and then I just kept going back. But yeah. I still fully support cutting the edge. It's good to it's good to just find a barber and be happy. I go to Coco. Coco's from Egypt. Is he's he? Across, he's based across the road. Right. He's good. I, re- I, re- I reckon I reckon Coco could line you up. Just, just as a backup it's option. It's too if far away. Like, I know, but then you come down to Hollywood for a day, you have a coffee, you walk <laughs> oh about, it's a good time. <laughs> the air is a wee bit nicer, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a good time. Um, like it's far enough going to Sandy Row, for lip's sake. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. There's, right, loads that I want to ask you, I want to get into. I want to ask you, bit of a stock question, I'm sure you get asked this all the time in interviews, but how you, you got into boxing, because I, I don't know that about you. Yeah. Um, I was always a, a boxing fan, I'm an only child, so... You know, most people follow their brothers to a boxing club. And I'm not from a, a boxing family or anything. So, um, but I always watched it and it was like a casual fan and um, wanted to join. But it was always big for me. Right. So, my dad thought, Lord, it was actually, I remember in the paper, Frampton was in it. I was like, you're, he won the anthems. And I was like, you're the same weight as Eamons and our big lads, you'd be fighting him. So, wait till you're in first year, and I was like, fuck, I don't want to be fighting that guy. He looks, like a, <laughs> looks like a bro. I think card hasn't grew from, that was in 2000. I'm a Zetsy 2000, the year 2000. Card still that says. And, um, and then, when I went in the first year, my dad was doing a door with a boxing coach, Seamus Deeds. And uh, I was running home one night. It was actually late. I had to be in for like, I think it was, Ten and it was like half ten, so I was running up Landon Avenue and then Shamey Dades come and says, "Hey, you're Tom's kid. How did you know?" <laughs> so, no, obvious, it's obvious. You have your surname in the back of your football top or something. I have Tommy number nine. <laughs> but um, he says, "Hey, Tom's kid." I says, "What do you about boxing?" I said, "Guys, just come down here tomorrow. Half six, I'll bring you down." I was like, fucking right, that's, that's my excuse then for so being late. Were you in between P7 and first year? You were about no, I, was just, I just went in the first year. So, so about 11. Was 11 just coming 12, and then he brought me down, and he says to me, right, I'll bring you here to prank it the first night, and if you don't like it, I'm friends with Emmons and Emerald, which is in just around the corner for me. Um, but sure, we'll see what it's like. And then I just stuck with it. I just stayed and prank it my whole career. And the f- from the first day, I was like, this is it, I want to do this. So fucking. Did you fight much growing up? You fight in school or anything like that? In primary school, I had a few fights. I never fought in, in um, secondary school. You couldn't fight in St. Mary's, for God's sake. It's Academics, though, man. <laughs> they're too busy <laughs> cracking the books. They were men cracking heads. I, I went mean? to CBS, so I did across the street. So we always had a wee bit of a, you know, we were always... They were jealous. We, we, we were did jealous. you two ever fight each other growing we up were, or anything like we that? He was across the road. I was up a hill with smart kids. He was up right. a hill with the smart kids. <laughs> he was down there in the... In the dumb school. <laughs> I, 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 I was We used to go up to their school to use their pool for PE, sort of. Yeah. God. And the teachers would go pissing that before you leave. And we'd all do it. And so that's what you're up against. That's what you're up the against. Teachers the teachers were saying. teachers were saying But then I had to go up to your school to do my politics A-level with Mr. Tully. That was... Uh, I was at... I don't... Politics as well. Different classes. But, um... I only done the first, I done lower sick when then Mr. Tully actually advised me to, to leave. Oh, wow. 
he said to me, stay. That's, <laughs> that's not the career advice you he want to hear. Me, I went back, not after doing the AS levels. Yeah. I think I got a D in politics. And, that's, that's and, a pa- um, that and all that's a past. And um, mm. he was like, Tommy, listen, see if I was you, concentrate on go- getting there in the books. You don't want to be my age and sitting here saying, like, I watch football and say, I'd play Emmons off a park. You don't want to be sitting here and saying, I'd box ahead of him. So just concentrate on boxing. Try your hardest um, to get to these Olympics. And then you can always come back to education. Mm. I was like, listen, I was going to leave anyway. But yeah. now you get the blame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I, I, was, I was loving it then. And, and um, that's what I did then. I left. But Wait, what, what, what was the point where you realised you were good at it? So when you, when you first joined that club, you were talking about there about a teacher going like, you should actively go and pursue the Olympics. What was the point where you went, Actually, this is something's happened here. Whether it was a a title or a, do you know what? It's um these like everything just happened, and then I was shit, but it made me believe that I was brilliant. So I was, like I said, it was big for me. It was boy to fifty two kilos, fifty four kilos, which is Aaron. No, no, yeah, 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 soaking wet. Would no, (laughs) no, you wouldn't be fifty four, would you? What's that in pounds? No, I, I think, think you'd be a bit. Frampton, I think Frampton was for the Bantam weight. Bantam no, weight. not Bantam. Um, oh, I'd, I'd be say about you're about super feather, wet welter, late welter, I'd late say. welter. Is who's in the who's the champion of late welter? Josh, is it Josh? No, <laughs> is it it's, Josh? It's Josh. Ah, Josh. Uh, Josh Taylor. You want to fight Josh Taylor? That's Josh Taylor. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'll, he doesn't want the smoke. No, he doesn't. No, he's come. He needs a bounce back after he does need to bounce back before I fight him it'd be a step down for me going you're not smoke him. you're 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 lemon flavoured vape <laughs> <laughs> and nobody wants that I like miss I like miss uh, uh, yeah. but yeah happening. so it was big for me age and um nobody was that in Antrim or also was 54 kilos uh, boy 2 boy 2 just means 12 and um went down to all errands so sorry, were you because you were heavier and bigger? Did you have to fight older kids? No, you just I just got to walk over. There was no one in the way. Oh, that's unreal. So, so you just walk straight in. They're like you're the champion. Right in, right in, right some champion. There's a medal and certificate. <laughs> I think. Keep Being calm. serious. Oh, I thought if there's nobody here, you without a fight. You without a fight, but you have to win. <laughs> when you're a kid, you have to win the anthems to get down to the All Ireland. Right. So that was me going to the All Ireland. With no fights. With no fights. <laughs> I had I had one fight, a club show. I had a, my first fight and I lost. Right. So still the champ. So you're coming up. You're the Come champ up. walking in with a non hundred percent record. All losses. Not more. Here it comes. <laughs> so I went down and um I got a, a band that semi final, there's only four of us. So you got another <laughs> So another yeah. The, it's not my fault. I mean just playing the hand was but I was dealt. And they say boxing's corrupt. So <laughs> <laughs> and and I never I had not box boy one. I only joined the boy two, so I had I had zero experience. Semi final boxing this guy who was a champion from the year before, but he was tiny. And um I was like, I punch ahead of him. <laughs> Get in. We had an absolute slug fest. And uh to be honest, I thought I lost at the end of it. And it was a draw and I had to count back and I was just down the dumps and I was I remember just in the ring just thinking. Maybe this game's not for me. Like, I'm going to go 0 and 2 here. Yeah. And I went, McCarthy in the blue corner. And I had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was puzzling. And that was me in the Irish final. So, in the national final. And my, on a draw. And my third fit. I know. Coming off a loss and a draw. <laughs> you went to the final. Guy took a box nine days before <laughs> this. You know what I mean? And uh, so, I'm in the final. And fucking. But I was buzzing in. I was like, I'm going for it. Yeah. Gonna make like this is my third ever fight. I'm gonna be Irish champion, and I, me and this guy. How many people was this in front of? Rough was this like? Well, the, f- the finals always are kind of busy. So, the the stadium holds about two, three thousand, but there'll probably be a, a couple of hundred to tell you. And have you finals. always? Because most kids and even people now, if you said. You're getting into this sport, all of a sudden you rise quickly through it and then you're performing. We can relate it to stand up in front of all these people. That could get you're like I'm buzzing, you're you know, you can believe you got through and then everything you're saying is like positive and yeah. good emotions. You strike me as a very confident guy. I think yeah. you're very like measured as well, too. 
So were you just like rolling with all that? Yeah, so the nerves didn't get say, you. Like I always see from my as a kid, like I said, or I was only child, so I've always been like put on a pedestal in my family, like both sets of grandparents. I'm the favourite grandchild. Cleaning up at Christmas so, too, probably. You know like, what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. all my aunties all love me. I'm everyone's favourite nephew. It's because, like, you don't have Competition. siblings to bring, so you can stay in anyone's house. It's not like, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, taking yeah. them McCarthy's or something. Yeah. Right, it's just right. like, oh, yeah, tell me we can stay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, like, a good relationship with everyone, and they just had, like, no, from when I was young, just instilled this, like, you are the man. Right. <laughs> so I just always follows and brought that in the box and it was shit where I was like, I'm fucking gonna win these all irons here. Right. Coming off a loss in a draw. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh So you get to the final. I got the final. I mean the guy I I was actually like on top of him, but he was another former national champion. And it were like ten seconds to go. As he said, I'd only just started boxing, so I didn't know how to throw up or cuts or anything. Straight punching was all I knew, and then your man kept up in his head, so I just kept punching him in the back of the head. Right. And <laughs> the ref had warned me loads of times. Oh, and you're not allowed to do you're that. Not, uh, all right. no. <laughs> I'm like, keep doing that there. <laughs> no, you're not allowed. Yeah. Suplex him, give him a stone so cold stunner. I'm digging him because I didn't know how to throw up with cuts. And then 10 seconds to go, the got a warning, two points took off. Oh. And then get, end up getting beat 8 6. But I was like, that's a robbery, and I was crying my eyes out. So I had that su- success, which, talking about it now, isn't really success. It was all, like, just flukes. Yeah. Mm. Don't let us get into yeah. your head now, by the way. <laughs> it, was good. it was all just, like, it all just unfolded, like, perfectly. So I had given me the confidence. Look, I've only had three fights, and I was in a nice little final. I can go all the way here. And then, and then, I, and then I did. So I think I had, like, belief. Was what pushed me on then to yeah. go on, and then I just started winning all Ireland's and just. Did you go to those in. Olympics? Nah, I didn't. The so that was the twenty twelve Olympics. No, so I and I went the the qualifiers, and it's so from being starting boxing, everything was falling in my favor. Then when I went to the qualifiers, I got a bronze medal at the thing. But if I had been the at the at the event, if I had been the Olympics previous. I had a qualified, but because it was the first time women's in, they cut the numbers for some of the meals. Right, so right. So my, my weight that went from having, I think it was 32, and the weight the 16 only. Oh, okay, I get you, get you. Yeah. So Women. Basically, oh. that's just a roundabout way of saying I got beat at the qualifiers. At the qualifiers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't know, you... It, not that you like fell into it, but if it hadn't been, do you think if it hadn't been for that guy doing the door with your dad, being like, "I'll take you down to this," is it something you might have thought about, but you might never have actually got yeah, because I had it? no legs into it. Yeah. Like, what What else might you have done with your life? Before Before that, I was playing the guitar, and all my family, on my mommy's side, are all music people. So I would have been, and the, on them like doing music definitely would have been doing music. Is labyrinth on your mother's side? Yeah. So your labyrinth your sisters don't know any boxers you're talking about but as soon as you mentioned labyrinth I'm <laughs> like yes yeah, so obviously I know yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so yeah, you yeah. usually related yeah uh, so his his mummy my mummy's sisters so like labyrinth was also a Atlanta Dune legend uh, there's yeah. loads of us <laughs> loads of us the, uh, the, would you ever drop in on a labyrinth track do a little verse maybe oh. I, you know like what what if, for your what next if, walkout what if it, yeah 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 for, the, for, for a walkout I'm Same sure for I, years. You could do earthquake, and I, I he sing, and I, I I'll do tiny tempest. But <laughs> if we can't get tiny, I'll do it. <laughs> tiny Todd for years. Tiny Todd. Oh no, that's my boxing nickname, isn't it? <laughs> Box <laughs> six. Tiny Todd. I was actually one time in the paper called called me Todd. I was Todd was a slagging for me for me. Oh really? After I'm all Ireland's my first. <laughs> No, I was buzzing. And they'd, they'd done a big rail up of everyone from the west who was in the in the all Ireland's. I was. And it was like great performance by. Todd McCarthy. I was like, fuck, I Hold crazy. on, is he not the guy in EastEnders? <laughs> I, I don't even watch EastEnders anymore. Todd McCarthy? Not anymore. Were <laughs> you a big yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know oh. that uh, me and Tom's dad's uh, did the door together? Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah big, big Joe Campbell. Oh, what? Oh, your dad? My dad, no, no, no. no, 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 no he did not do the door. I didn't do the door if your dad. <laughs> 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 would have been great. 
<laughs> he was maybe doing the interior design to pick yeah, the yeah, doors, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't doing I the door. I did the door men's uniforms, but I didn't. <laughs> do the door. So yeah. your dad's did the door. The, yeah, do, you know what I, do you know what I would love? If we, the next generation of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Tommy, a bit of he's all Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> there something? I, when I was young, it was always my ambition to be a doorman. Yeah, right. Same. It's like, <laughs> you want to be what there is. But then, after you get the truth, one of it. my one of my fights, one of my, my second fight, um, you know, people just loved the. It was this was like Twitter in real life. Somebody coming up and you no know, talking shit to me, right in my the face. West? I was in the dive. was like, "Yep, why are you fighting shit?" People like that. And I, it's only my second fit. What, what do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> Your man's in there eating pizza. And I went, and what? They well, just fought? Do you know what? Uh, you're, you should be fighting at a higher level. And I went, I stopped him in like a minute. What, do you, what more could I do? Do you know what? You make a good door, man. And that's just stuck in my head. And I like, I never do a door because I don't want him to go. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. predict this head back. Yeah. <laughs> but look, you're shot here together now. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully, yeah, you can put it all to one side. <laughs> Not the name, man. But yeah, do you get that way? Like, what's your relationship with social media? Like, do you get a bit of shit on there every now and again? And sometimes, um, and I don't mind it. Like, I think if you're on Twitter, you can't go on and try and complain about something serious or mm. feeling really down or like. Twitter is for trolling, so troll or re-troll. And then I just get wrapped up in it sometimes, though, going back and forward with yeah. people slaying. So I actually deleted, the, I haven't deleted my account, but I deleted the app just so that I don't get sucked into it. Have you had a online thing with any fighters that's turned into yeah. anything? Or? I had one years ago with a guy, it was Commonwealth Champion at the time, and we were trying to arrange a fight. Well, I had my, like, that's why I have a manager. Let the managers do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then they started on Twitter. And then so me and him were just going back and forward, slabbering. And then Chris Bill Smith. Yeah. That there, he went, he took the Twitter. And then me and him had a wee back and forth exchange. A wee bit, but I had a, I had a bit of a beef with a boxer. It? Who? La- a couple of weeks ago, we had Sean McComb on the live podcast. We were talking about O'Hara Davis. And I said, Sean... Hold on, I messaged him here during the live podcast. Yeah. I think he wouldn't reply. So I messaged him, start, start, started getting at him. <laughs> Checked my phone Straight towards the back. end of the podcast. He goes, what was that in English? Because I had like, <laughs> I call him Pancake Head and all. I said, you don't know. <laughs> I said, Big McCombs after you and all. And I said, Aaron wanted a piece of him. Yeah. And he just said in English. And then I as soon as the podcast was over, I messaged him back. I was like, I'm sorry, mate. I'll do a podcast now. And I was trying to be funny. Laugh. So I think I'm fighting him yeah, at, yeah, at the failure. At the failure, yeah. Um, yeah. So moving into pros, then how did that how did that come about for you? Um, I was doing really well, like as a as a as a senior, and then I just broke into the top ten in the world. And then a guy who was sponsoring me, he's, he was actually a manager, he's Brian McGee's manager, and um Brian Brian McGee. he's Brian's <laughs> manager, yeah, big Brian. And um he says to me, look, tell me you're top ten in the world, now. If you're top ten in the world as a as a pro, you're a millionaire. So that was all he had to say. Yeah, <laughs> get, get the pen. <laughs> <laughs> what was your know, first pro fight? But that's not true. <laughs> that ended really sadly. No, 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 that's not true. <laughs> this, uh, I don't want to give him my false hope. It is true. You're right. Like people see any boxer on TV and go, they must be loaded. But really. It's only if you're the champion, essentially, yeah. is you're getting the big, big, big well, money. Well, the, I understand the logic in that, though. Uh, but also, it's like, that's like, so that's us almost like, and that guy coming up to you in Devonish, it's like someone being like, just just be the best, be the 10th best in the pros and go and win it. Yeah. Like, it's, you can't just say yeah. you're going to do that. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's a hard road. Like. Or someone being like, you need to fight better fighters and, and that kind of thing. Well, obviously, you need to. It's like doing gigs, and we'll yeah. talk about that in a minute. But, like, you need to, like, do a load of gigs to get experience yeah. and build it up and then yeah. do bigger and bigger. But it's not as easy as going, even if you're dominating in the amateurs, you can't be like, go and be world champion like, yeah. next month. Then. Lama Tango, mm-hmm. who is the greatest amateur boxer of all time, mm-hmm. and probably the best boxer ever born but he turned he won two olympics he lost one fight as an amateur two world champ- won everything as an amateur turned pro many amateur fights did he have like 400 yeah or something? yeah 300 it's ridiculous like the 400 like he's just and um it was like right he's gonna be make history become world champion the first 
fastest ever. Want to do it in a second fight? You get beat, yeah. and it's just you cannot, you can't cheat the friggin' the yeah. system. Yeah, like, there's a. Well, what age did you turn pro? Uh, twenty three. That's a good age. Yeah, because you got the experience. And do you? What do you like now compared to then? Like you know, like maturity wise yeah. and all that kind of thing. Um. You seem to really when have was, your head screwed on. When it. I was twenty three, I turned pro. It was kind of. I went in like thinking this is gonna be great here. You're gonna be getting all sorts of dough. And then after your first fight, then they had you with a deduction sheet, right? Oh. So your medicals, your coach's fee, your manager's fee, the sparring partners, this that. And I was like, "Fuck's sake!" I didn't know because <laughs> when you're an amateur, everything's yeah. paid for you. Right, right, right. So and it's like. Jesus, this is reality here and then you've got your board tax and so now nah, you're gonna have to pay tax at the end of the year what the fuck's tax right because <laughs> what when, is tax <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you're getting your um grants you get a, a tax clearance form so you yeah. don't have to like and then um you're you're trying to pull everything in yourself no terms of training and organize mm. whereas when you're on the amateur team you're getting the best of everything, and yep. it's all laid out for you. You don't, you don't really have to do much work. You just have to show up and and do your part. But everybody's in their position, so it actually took me years. It's still there, you know, chopping and chains and coaches and mm. just trying to find the right fit. Tell us, yeah, do we uh, we we fight in Estonia, didn't you? Yeah. Well, uh, where'd that come about, or how that come about? Because that seemed really like yeah, it was nowhere. just to be. It was just over there nowhere. training, and then we just out and then end up on a wee show and it was like get a wee knockout so, now? I got a wee knockout win it's so surreal because my last <laughs> the last couple of years since the pandemic all my fights have been big ones on TV and yeah cold mains and main event and all and then go to Estonia it's on a wee pro-am show so it was all like amateur kids and it see especially being like the champion and being in no like at the top of the bill you get your own changing room and stuff so now I'm in Estonia. I'm sitting in a wee room. There's all these wee kids running about with their amateur gear on. Doing <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? Where have I ended up? How the how the media fall? <laughs> and, and then once they finished, then I was the first fight in the bill. And um, Falcon in the box. Uh, he'd like like a pair of socks. Or, it didn't even look like shoes. He'd no, I do was he like me? He, he looked like you coming out of the Was he wearing Crocs? I don't know what he... But I just looked down at his flippers and... Then <laughs> so I said, working a body, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Thinking he was going to go down in the corner to get up, man. That's <laughs> enough. But your man stepped back and said, No! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, this, this guy fancies it. And then, end up, for, through the first round, I sat in the corner and I was going... My coach was giving me advice, though, no? but I kind of, like, I was not listening. I was going, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, why am I even in the second round with this guy? And then I just, I made a wee thing in my mind. <laughs> I says, 67 year old guy yeah, opposite him I said, <laughs> in a wheelchair. He's going on. And I says, do you know what? See if, if this goes one more round, I'm jumping out of the ring myself. Right. And I'm sorry, I hit him one, two. The basics, you know. The one two. One two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's he just top. stepped back and he went, Whoa. <laughs> And I went there, ref. Ref, he's a. Ref. Boxes me. Bang, whack the again. He went down. And then in the corner, stood up, man. I guess it was the second time the corner interjected. And then he just. He, he, had, no, he, he had no objections <laughs> this time. Uh, he's, he's checking out. Are you. Uh, you're not going to do the fail or anything, but I know you're doing the comedy. I'm doing the I mean, I'm. But are you, you're, you're, doing you're, the <laughs> but you're not doing the the boxing no, event, no. no. Let's no. talk about um, stand up. Yeah. So uh, every any time we have a boxer on the podcast, we always when I speak to Dan and Mike and Tony that work on the podcast, we always say like that's boxers just have some entertain entertainer side to them, and I found it pretty much with everyone who's come on. Where you go like funny, and maybe it's maybe it's because you're, you know, you just grew up together, you're in the gym, and it always sounds <laughs> like that's an environment where people are taking the piss, having the piss taken out of them. So it's a funny environment. Yeah. But yeah, Sean and 
Paddy and Tyrone, everyone who comes on is is funny. Um, and I've seen you do interviews and press before, and like you're a confident guy. And then all of a sudden, I see I see pictures on Instagram. You've jumped on, done a bit of stand up at a gig with Paddy McDonald and a few others. So is that something? You well, first of all, before all that, how was that as an experience, and how was it? What you thought it would be like, and then what it actually was like. Um, it was, it was amazing actually. Like uh, I really enjoyed it, and uh, before it, it was k- the similar kind of thing to boxing, like going out for a fight. So it was Sean Haggerty's event, and Sean gave me the opportunity, and uh, so we're all up. Paddy gave me a lift up tilt, and he was like, oh, no, no, like, oh no, <laughs> no, but he was. Like, <laughs> I've got a lift with Paddy for the egg. It's scary. But in the head, it was sounding like he was giving me good pointers, and no, like, put my man kind of at ease. He was like, yeah. Stop telling me you're going up here. Nobody's expecting anything from you. Uh, so if you're funny, happy days. If not, nobody cares. Cause yeah. nobody's How long was the spot? You. How long were you doing? Five minutes. Yeah. So, um, he was just. He says, I, I'll um, watch you and then I'll give you a few pointers after. And um, so I went up. And before, no, like, in the in the changing room, yeah. <laughs> we were all there. And uh, Dave Elliott was on. I think he was the first. Yeah. And so when he was going up, he um, got up to the door and he was like, oh, <laughs> it. no, like, going out. <laughs> and he got, he turned around and he had, where do we do it, lads? <laughs> and, uh, this is exactly like a boxing chain room. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He put, he lo- and he looks like the guy you fought in Estonia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake, he looks better. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but uh, see, with him, him no getting ready to go out, that just made me, I felt comfortable in the environment because I felt like I'd been in yeah. this situation and, before. And, and people wouldn't, th- you might not necessarily have thought that because if you think backstage of comedy, load of comedians, people probably think everyone's sitting there they're confident just making jokes maybe having a pint yeah it is like before you play sport that's what I thought people I are thought, pacing like there's gonna be drinks and all ahead of it and man, there was a big case of water it was exactly like a, a boxing test room yeah. a case of water and everyone just sitting around going through you no, know, like their own thoughts and they're yep. making me better conversation but then going back to their own thoughts yep, yep. and um but th- that made me feel less nervous then because it's one this is the way they feel and what Paddy had said, if it goes wrong, nobody laughs. Like, so what? Whereas when you're going to defend, if it goes wrong, you're getting your ballot snacked. Yeah. Fucking clean this. So yeah. <laughs> so, Sometimes uh, that happens at a gig as well. <laughs> Chris Rock thought that. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> but so, um, it, but I, felt, I felt confident. But it, I was like, I'd, I'd prepared, like we sat for five minutes and I was going... I don't know if this is gonna land up here. Like, will they get this? But um, in terms of it's universal comedy. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Like, the, when I did my first gig, at my and for the first while of doing stand up, my hands would shake. I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. My voice would go a wee bit. I couldn't look at the crowd. Yeah. If you if you on your first gig feel comf- comfortable up there, and uh, and you. I think you have that that advantage of you've done press conferences before. Yeah. You've done post fight interviews in the so ring. So that is the thing. Like it's not like you're going for the first time to speak to an audience. Like I've had to do talk to schools and all before. Yeah. And yeah. So it, was, it wasn't like yeah, like oh, having geez, a mic in your people. hand. Yeah. It's such an people go. I want to do stand up. Oh, yeah, I've made people laugh. See the feeling of having a microphone in your hand with a lead to it. It's going to be a speaker where people can hear you louder. It, it fucks with people's head and it did with yeah. mine big time like so but it, what was the point when you made the decision you were going to do that I was on Sean's podcast and he'd ask me so what what do you want to do and are, are you still ambitious with boxing and blah 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 kind of like what do you want to be when you grow up I was like <laughs> uh, I want I don't want to be in the box obviously I want to be a world champion but I want I want it all I want to yeah, try acting one man trying a bit of stand up and he says, Well, if you're serious, I'll get you a spot in is it the pavilion. Yeah, yeah. Open mic comedy. He says, I oh, will get you an open mic. And t- I says, All right, 100%. And then that, when that podcast came out, a few people were watching, When are you doing this 
stand up for fuck's sake you're threatening to do and I was like well I don't know it's up to Sean Sean's organising it so I texted Sean and Sean says I had already spoke to forget the guy's name he said he was going to get in touch Luke. but he never got in touch and then he texted me again he says did he get in touch yet? and I says no and then he said well I'm running this thing up in Cole Island you can do five minutes it's not a comedy club it's just a gig yep. he says alright I'll try it but Paddy said most people's first time doing a, a gig is in front of like six people. Mm. Yeah. You're just coming up here, the lands down like there's about a hundred and fifty people come there. But <laughs> that's all of Cool Island. I don't know. It was like the whole town was there, but it, I think that was better in order to uh, do that. Oh, a thousand percent. Aye, thousand it's, percent. It's somewhere like you don't really know and it's not local. Yeah. It's definitely, if you were doing it in like the Felons or the Devonish or something, you'd be way more yeah. nervous. I would, I would but not. if there were six people as well, like, yeah, it's harder get uh, the momentum going. Uh, yeah. And you could hear somebody said, oh, what gay shit? You what did that first half feel like? Um, like? A relief? Yeah, that's me. Felt like you were on. We're on. on. This is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> and then what was the feeling like after you got off stage, after your set finished, compared to when you finish a fight? I felt... I don't know if it felt better, but it felt it felt good because at the end, everyone was tearing and all, and like, I was like, oh, this is great. And then you just can just relax in, and um, you don't have any sore face yeah, or hands yeah. there's no <laughs> aches or pains yeah. to get a drink in it was like do you know what would be great like a t- great trademark for you if you really get in the stand up and do more gigs every time the MC brings you on like when you walk past the MC you just do a handshake you do a pass or whatever if you fucking spark them out <laughs> yeah, whoever is. it is just like full just uppercut wagon. every time I'll be like I'll be getting banned from all this yeah. <laughs> and it would be a great clip McCarthy. great social media and then if you hold a press conference after Office. every stand up gig yeah. just, just break down just break like down high down. went set by set <laughs> and, uh, the opening joke wasn't too good but uh, the clothes and are you really going to do it and like, is this you being like yeah I'm going to do it and see do what you know what like, I I'd, I'd done an interview after and I said look I'm not going to be travelling all around the country trying to get five minutes here, there and everywhere. I'll just take it as it comes. Mm. But I actually do want to take it serious. Like, I don't... I'm not just here, just, you no know, like... You know when people come into boxing and they're like, fuck, oh, I'm going to give it a go. Like, remember... No, uh, he, he's serious. He's a real dealer. Tom knows I'm serious. But, you know, like, people... I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get in the box in here and or anything, but they're just they haven't got a clue and have All no the gear respect. No idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I don't want to be that guy, you know, like who's coming in and and fucking what's he had? Like he's just because guys that like, use take it serious and use has been working for years. I don't want to be like oh, I guess that I'm gonna just it's gonna be easy and yeah, you want well, I want I want to be part of it and that, that, that's obvious because of where you did it you know you could have you could have organised a gig somewhere close to home and invited all your friends and family down that kind of thing mm-hmm. and you would have it would have been brilliant but you you wouldn't have learnt anything because they're going to find you funny anyway they're there to support you so the best testament of what you did is you went to a place in Cull Island where some people are obviously going to know you if they're five fans and that kind of thing a lot of people won't so they don't you, yeah. you, you've done You've not bought anything with them. Like they're not invested in you, yeah. so they're gonna watch you. Even if even if the MCs like it's his first gig, that buys you a wee bit of a laugh. Yeah, but not but, a lot. So the fact you got laughs, and, and I spoke to Paddy about it. He's like, he fucking did great. He got the laughs. They weren't they weren't just a given for you. Yeah, you actually yeah. you actually earned them. So that's what I'd be taking out of it. That actually yeah. you went up to and those sort of gigs at a Gaelic club up in Coal Island or where or wherever it is. They're they're not easy. Like they're no. not. There's some comics who wouldn't do it. Mm. They'd be like, nah, I, I just want to do the the comedy clubs where people are used to so comedy and that kind like, of thing. They know the environment. They, they know yeah. when they laugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. See, before I ran up, like I'd say to my missus, I know, like, ran the sad bar, and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's funny, like, but I, I hate that. But people might laugh at it. And then I was... <laughs> Real help. I was like, <laughs> right... I but then you're now. you're doing it out of context. Yeah, you have to be up and perform it. You like, could, you could. Like I was just sitting on the sofa here, like mm. so. I'm gonna say, uh, I said and the other. 
she's just stuck now. Like, and she's making you then question. Yeah. You're, you're and going, you're not, but you're not performing. It's how yeah. you're performing. You could tell me the funniest bit of stand up all time. Here, there, this bit happens, and then that, and I, I, I like, but then right. I see it on stage, and I go, all yeah. right, now you're at, you're you're performing it, you're acting it, and that sort of thing. Yeah. But, but I, I honestly do think. I don't know. This is just me going back to being a boy to boxer, I no burn it. But I think I could actually do well on it. If and if you're doing that gig and that's your first gig and you enjoyed it and you're doing more gigs, you're already doing well at it. It's just I, I do want to take it as far as because it can lead to other things as well. Like boxing has brought me into stand up really, hmm. and um and then but but they can feed each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so like if you're doing stand up, you're coming on podcast, that kind of thing, that then can help feed fights and, yeah. and vice That's versa. That's what my manager, I think he was, you know, the, when he saw the head, the Instagram post and all, he was like, like, Tommy needs to relax with that stand up, like he's a boxer, like what's mm. he at? But then he phoned me and he was like, Tommy, that's fucking brilliant. Yes. Like, <laughs> These people, this is, your, know, <laughs> yeah. this is brilliant for your profile. When you're fighting, like, people may buy tickets and it's more interesting. Yeah. So they, they can't feed each other. But and it's a, it's, if it's, it starts going well, I'm hanging the gloves up. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he'll pick them up. <laughs> oh, 100%. I'll take where you live. One in, one out. <laughs> the, the, but do you, uh, do, does your manager or anything ever, like, because you do some extracurricular activities, stuff like stand-up and whatever else, does he ever, like, say to you here, you need to be more focused about, you know, no, no. being he, he more loves champion it. or anything like that. He he loves it because he's like, I get you out there. And then for mm. after boxing, he's like, you can go in the, you'll always be all right. You can go in the punditry because you can talk and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, of course. But See, with stand-up, you'll, you, you'll have such great stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you'll, yeah, great you'll have stories. these experiences. I think that's what Paddy was like, impressed with my, with my five minutes because I didn't talk about boxing at all didn't oh, mention wow. yeah. and yeah, he was yeah. like I was expecting you to go up no and just tell boxing stories yeah but like see anything you can put a un- unique perspective on which like also and you might not even talk about it in your act but you know you're mixed race you're from Belfast yeah that, that is I mean, really what the whole thing is my experience growing up in Belfast and mm, yeah like the things so many like things that or if you think about it properly they're offensive but yeah. if you look at it from a different angle be offensive like, if I went stupid. on stage and talked about no but like offensive to me with... like people <laughs> like things would they say to me oh yeah, no, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like in school I'm sure you got yeah, like people say are you wild he's the best fighter in the school <laughs> <laughs> my school too <laughs> nah, but um, see I was kind of lucky where I never really got bullied or anything or Right, because I of did. who I was, no, like I was I always, did. I was always big for my age, and then yeah. I was, I became a, like a champion boxer, all iron champion at an early age. So I had respect. So yeah. maybe people would slag me behind my back, but to my face, they wouldn't already. fuck with you, basically. Basically, and I, loved, I never wasn't a bully boy. No. I was always like just slagging and all, and like, yeah. trying to. Have a good atmosphere. No, like I loved going to school. It was always uh, slang. I was like a class clown kind of. Yeah. Yep. Always making jokes. So really, stand up is like just following on from yeah my school. Life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the gym, as you say, there's so much slang in the gym and storytelling. Like I love Sean. It's between me and Sean McComb, who's the best storytellers in yeah. Irish boxing. Sean's very good. Sean after him, is yes. brilliant. He's yeah. a good lad. Yeah. And um. That's why I used to love going to Dublin room because we would talk the whole time. Shut, shut the whole time, yeah. There was like Tyrone McKenna just sitting his phone. Yeah. Oh, really? Just, like, just on would... ASOS band shirts. Yeah, I don't know. What I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you may as well just sit in the back. Right, 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 right. But, um, nah, like, I was reading about um, Paddy Ref. It's like he's only doing comedy for two years and the next thing he's selling out the Odyssey. Mm-hmm. I don't be Tommy Ref. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tommy yeah, yeah. Rob, no, no, Tommy Todd. I um Tommy Todd. Yeah, yeah. But so, Shane's paid his dues. Like, he has and then some. But um and then some. The, uh, Fifteen years, lads. I'd, I'd Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> yeah, oh, I hear you. But look at look at the look at us top now. Of the game, top of the game. Look at us now. The uh in terms of like for the future of your boxing career like what do you what's next for you what's like the next fight or what's like what do you what do you see like maybe what's the one two three year plan of like getting back to the title even um yeah so my next my next fight was actually negotiating for a massive fighter 
that was going to be happening next month. Can you name names? Or but is that, is that, no, would that be, the, that'd be bad? That would be bad. I want some juicy <laughs> gossip, so we'll do for the boxing scene. It's going to be fair Brian McGee. <laughs> 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 no, uh, so everything was, like, both sides were all agreed. Up. But then, because of thought that Mania got in Estonia, Estonia, the board was like, listen, we can't let you fight for this title when the last carry you fought was that level. Uh, my manager was like, well, if you look at his record, he hasn't had a, an easy fit, so he's entitled to handle him. Yeah. So if, I'm going to have another a, a credible fight, maybe for like a, a minor title, and then run the dice again. Yeah. But I have to say, if his stand-up stuff kicks off, if Shane brings me on tour of him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, I'll, sure. I'll pack... Yeah. You bring you both. You do stand up. Spar each other. <laughs> spar each other. Oh, you don't want the heat. Uh, oh, the the <laughs> <laughs> like, who, Shane, who are the sport actors? No, so we can put this. It's black and white lightning. Just put that down. They'll know what that means. <laughs> Just let me do your straight punches in the back of my head. Uh, for fuck's sake. Get the one. <laughs> do the uppercut. Fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see your set. I'm yeah, me, do yeah, together. Yeah. You're doing yours. You're doing Friday night in the film. Right? I'm doing Friday and Saturday. Saturday, but I'll come down to I'll come down to one of Paddy's to watch. I would come down to Paddy's bed be in Uganda at that point. He actually is going, going to he actually is going to Uganda. Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening over? Sparring. <laughs> Sparring. <laughs> you have to get a different look sometimes, Definitely and I just feel like when well, you went to Estonia, I'm going. He's I'm actually going over there to do charity work. I'm going. I, actually, I take a piss out of. Yeah, we just joke about everything, but he actually is. He actually is. I'm doing something good for the African community. We're supplying water filters out there so we can have clean drinking water. So you go. And there's, but there's then people going after this month. podcast people out there are going to be like I see you I know you're in the box you're going to get sparked out you're going to a bit like him in Estonia they're going to throw you in a card no, but, but the, in you, can, you should try and, like, should we do like you know like Channel 4 you do wife swap we do career swap so you do comedian I do boxing what do you mean swap I am a comedian now. Yeah. I know you are, you are I'm, I'm a boxer, boxer. <laughs> I'm a boxer now I am one and all in stand up <laughs> <laughs> if it goes like your boxing career next gig will be live at the Apollo uh, oh, <laughs> straight in straight in I mean, everyone will be racking up 15 years <laughs> me crying in the back <laughs> the, uh, who's the champion of your weight class currently uh, there's probably a few is there yeah Lawrence O'Coley and then again Australia just dethroned the long term champion who was Maris Breeze. So I thought his name was D. I thought it was D Throne too. No, no, no. Yeah. I yeah. Know, he sounds like he's from Turf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was D Throne. I was actually a big D Throne. Thanks, McCoy. We could uh, we could talk for another hour. I'd, l- I'd love you to come back on soon because yeah. we've talked about 1% of what I want to talk about. But cheers for coming on. Good luck with the gigs. Uh, I'll try and see you at the Fela gig, but you're going to be doing gigs anyway, hopefully. I'm so. doing one. July the twenty eighth. Yeah, it is the twenty eighth of my heart felt. Oh. I'm up to ten minutes this time. Oh, oh, oh I double it. See, I. getting the buy every round. <laughs> every round getting the buy. <laughs> getting twenty five grand for doing it. <laughs> well, sure. What can I say? Listen. <laughs> well, Tommy, thank you for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. No one trying to make thanks this happen. For for me. I'm glad we finally yeah, got it yes. sorted. Love Aaron it. Butler, thanks for being here. Love Your analysis it. as an expert in both comedy and boxing. Is invi- invi- There's no one better. There's no Gonna one come better. back to Uganda, oh, right. <laughs> light light bantamweight champion. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going. <laughs> See, he comes the, back lined up. <laughs> the first fail. I'll not come back. Then. Dreads. <laughs> Hope will be going. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> You're cheating on Hope before he even went. <laughs> Like where's Kiki? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Kiki and Cobb have been fucking waiting on you. They're put headlock, <laughs> getting focused with the belt, and on the barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, cheers! Thank Get you right. very much. Thanks, Thanks to everyone pleasure. for watching, listening. See you next time. Mm-hmm.